Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel and welcome back to another video. So today's video is a little bit different than ones that I have done in the past. Kind of, sort of, but not really. Today is Tuesday, September the 4th, and it is the first day of school. However, we haven't had school yet because mom did not get their curriculum loaded in enough time. It is right now two o'clock in the afternoon and we are getting ready to start school. So if you're new to my channel, hey y'all, how y'all doing? My name's Shakima. I'm a single mom of four children. I have two girls, two boys, one fur dog, and we do have a grandma. Um, I'm a full-time working single mom but I also homeschool full-time. Now, in the state of North Carolina, if you're new to homeschooling in North Carolina, it may be different in your state, so please check. North Carolina does not regulate the hours that we school, so my children do not have to attend school during the regular school day when public school students are in school. As long as we log in 180 school days, my children can school any day of the week. So sometimes we have to have holiday school, Saturday school, Sunday school, night school, it just depends. However, today is a bit of mom's issue. Because we are right now preparing for Hurricane Dorian, I and also getting beauty situated in her new facility, my weekend was full. It was very full of different things and I just got their curriculum in the, the latter part of August. So I did not have it early enough to be able to go ahead and get all of the curriculums loaded because I don't buy curriculum until August just because it's expensive. We get no supplements, no subsidies or anything for being homeschoolers. So anything I spend on the children comes out of my pocket and their curriculum is a little bit expensive. But I am getting ready to load in Jackson. Alana has already started school because I got hers loaded earlier. And um, I'm getting ready to load in Jackson's and I thought I would just share with you guys how I get them prepared and situated for school. So if you're interested, hang out with me. If this is not your type of video, then that's okay. There'll be a cooking video, there'll be a vlog, there'll be a clean with me coming up after this video. So for those of you who are interested in how I homeschool as a full-time mom, keep watching okay so my children use a curriculum called switched on schoolhouse and the reason we chose switched on schoolhouse well there were two reasons for one the kids were in a homeschool co-op when we very first started homeschooling and this was the curriculum that they used at the co-op so when we very first started homeschooling um, and using this curriculum alana was in fifth grade and so we had one fifth grader and we had one first grader. Jackson totally skipped kindergarten, did not go at all. And it worked out fine. With Switched on Schoolhouse, they actually start on the computer in third grade. So for first and second grade in kindergarten, if you do that, you'll have to supplement or use a different type of a curriculum. We used Easy Peasy with Jackson in the very beginning. Didn't love that a whole lot. Just because as a mom, I couldn't figure out how to work the system. So I ended up just doing like workbooks and stuff with him, but he actually had a teacher in his first grade class because one of the ladies in the homeschool co-op was a former elementary school teacher. So it worked out really well. But with Switched On Schoolhouse, it starts on the computer in third grade. And the reason I use the computer is because it grades all their assignments. What I'm gonna show you today is setting up their school. So I'm going to set up Jackson's school and I'm going to set up his grading. I'm going to set up how he can work on his tests or his lessons. I'm gonna set up um, the grading scale and I'll show you all of that. Now my children, Alana last year, because she was first year high school, she's 10th grade now, she was ninth grade last year, she went on a block schedule. And the reason I did block schedule is strictly um, because that's what I knew as a high school teacher. And I really wanted to not overwhelm her with the amount of work she would have to do as a freshman. So I gave her four classes and in the spring she had four classes. So this year we're doing the same. Alana has four classes. 
Well, she's actually going to have five classes because music is going to be a class as well. And for Jackson, I'm going to put him on a four by four block as well. So with him, it's a little bit different because they have five curriculums that or five subjects. They have math. So this is math, sixth grade. They have language arts, sixth grade, history, sixth grade, science, and Bible. In addition to these, Jackson will have music. He will have a personal finance class or like a Dave Ramsey Financial Peace Junior. And then he will also have Spanish. Now he'll do Spanish in the spring and I'm going to do the personal finance in the fall. So we're all gonna be doing Dave Ramsey to get our personal finance class because that is one of Alana's classes as well. Now, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna load on to Jackson's computer this new curriculum. Okay, so here is Jackson's computer screen and I'm getting ready to load in this particular, um, this is called the installation disc. So I have the installation disc here and I'm going to put this in the, we don't, the computer he has does not have a hard drive. So I'm using a one that I, I purchased off of Amazon years ago for this particular just for the specific of loading in their CDs. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't have a CD drive, I'm sorry. It doesn't have a CD-ROM drive, so I bought an external one, and this is the one I'm gonna use to set up his curriculum. And if it doesn't automatically prompt you, then I'm just gonna go here to look for my DVR drive, and then I'm gonna click on Setup, because this is what I wanna do for his school. Yes, I would like for it to change. And now I'm going to run the setup. All right, now that it's done that initial setup, I'm gonna do the full home install. And it's asking me to check all my hardware to make sure everything is right. And I'm gonna click next. And then these are the things that will be loaded. And then I'm gonna click install. And it's going to run that installation. All right, my setup wizard is ready, so I'm gonna hit next. And then I'm going to put in some information. So username, the organization, and then the serial number, and the serial number is in here, right here. So I'm gonna load that in and move to the next step. All right, now it's gonna tell me that it's going to be installing this on my hard drive, which is no problem. Then it asks me for my teacher name, my password, and then my term that I'm gonna be using this for. So I'm gonna put in those credentials and then I'll show you the next part. All right, so here's where I have all of my teacher information. So I have my name, my password confirmed, and then this is school year term 2019-2020. Go to the next and then it's going to start the installation process. So it's not hard. And if for some reason, um, this is what was good for me, was it gives you this booklet and then it has all the steps for you. So it tells you when you're doing the home install, the full install, how to go about doing it. And it shows you pictures and everything that you could possibly need to do that home install. So now my setup wizard is finished and it's gonna continue to go through that process and then it's gonna take me to the actual setup wizard of my school but i like this and every year and i've done this this is our sixth year i still have to look in here to make sure i'm doing it right and actually i loaded in alana's and had not done hers correctly so i had to uninstall her as a student or unenroll her as a student and then go back and re-enroll her i was very fortunate that i didn't have to redo everything i had already done i had her school set up and then I had to set up the student. So it wasn't bad. I just still need to go back and follow my directions. So this is gonna run and then I'll show you the next part. All right, now my installation is done and now I have the two new icons. I have a student icon here and I have a teacher icon here. So I'm gonna double click my teacher icon and then I'm going to log myself in using the credentials that I gave myself 
and then it's going to take me to the setup wizard and prayerfully I am going to okay this is says it's going to look for updates I'll click okay um, it'll tell me that I don't have my internet on which is fine because I don't usually let the kids have internet for their school they don't need it everything they need is on their computer screen it's all within the hard drive of their computer they don't they they need nothing for research they don't need anything like that and if they do then when I am here with them doing the teacher portion then I will allow them to have internet I know that's a little sh more strict than some people but that's just my process because I am a single parent homeschooler I have to make sure that I put in every uh, conceivable precaution because there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet so I'm going ahead and put in my credential and then I'm going to click login now this is where we start to get our school set up so it gives us three easy steps I have to set up my school enroll my student and then install my curriculum very simple after I've done it for a couple of times so ready let's begin all right now I'm going to add a term this term is 2019 2020 which would take me 180 days because Jackson is going to be on a four by four block or block schedule whether it's four classes or three classes or whatever because he actually totally only has five classes I'm adding in some extras he's asked me for a coding class which I'm going to try to find for him the Spanish and then the finance and music so he's actually going to have nine classes and Alana will have that many or a few more so I'm going to add a term because I want to make sure that I'm setting him up for half a semester. So I'm going to say 2019, 2020 fall semester. Now, everything I'm doing is going to be under the 2019, 2020 fall semester. And I'm going to say save. Then I'm going to click on next. Now it says, do I want to give uh, due dates to my student? I absolutely do. I like them to know what they're working on every single day. So they have due dates. Next. Um, this says that I want a traditional calendar, which gives me 180 days. They allow me to put in my holidays or I can create a custom calendar, which is what I'm going to do because I'm going to give them a fall semester. Click next. Now, this says I get to choose when my school starts. So my school is starting on September the 3rd, and it's going to end for the fall semester on January the 6th. So I'm going to keep moving until, oh, wait, wait, wait. I went too far. I need to go backwards. Okay. It's going to end on January the 6th, and that's going to give me 90 days of school. Now, we're not going to have 90 days because we are going to have some vacation days. We'll have less days in the first semester than we do in the second semester because that's just how it works. Now, I'm using the calendar that I'm on for my school system because I like us to be on at the same time and off at the same time. If we need to adjust, no problem. We can, but I like to keep us around the same. So I'm going to click Next. And then the next thing it asks me to customize my calendar. So yes, I do want to customize my calendar because I'm going to go ahead and put in the days that the kids will be out of school. So the first thing it tells me to do is enter a description. And so for our first day, they're going to have a teacher's work day. And that day is going to be October the 21st. And so I'm going to click October 21st. It's going to start that day and end that day. It's just one day, which you see here. And it says, do you want this date to be a school day? No, they're off from school. So I'm going to customize some more dates. Now, the next day is going to be an annual leave day for mom, which is a holiday. And that's going to be, this is an annual holiday. And it's going to be Veterans Day. This is going to happen on November 11th. It's one day only 
and this will not be a school day either. Now, I'm going to fill in the rest of their calendar, and then I'll bring you back for the next part. All right, now I have customized the calendar. I put in all the holidays that the kids have, and it's going to ask me to view my calendar. So I'm going to click on view the calendar, and it's going to pull up my calendar for me, and it's going to tell me that, let me see if I click on this, It'll say a check mark here means this is a school day. So today is a school day. I could make some notes in here or I can take this day out if I decide he can start school tomorrow. So if I take that out, it'll ask me if I want to adjust my calendar, but I'm keeping that there just fine. No problem. I do want to scroll down though to make sure that all of the days that I put in are marked. So here for October 21st, that's a teacher work day that is showing up. Then in November, we have our annual holiday, that's Veterans Day, and then they're out for Thanksgiving, 27, 28, and 29. Now, on Jackson's, all of his school days are in tan. His off days are in gray. So I'm good. I'll just check to make sure that it got everything for Christmas, all of our Christmas break days, no problem. We're gonna be out. And then he'll go back to school. I actually need to probably change that um, to make this a school day. I'm going to edit this to change this until the 5th instead of the 6th. So I'm going to save my, my calendar and now I'm ready to move forward. So the next thing it wants me to do is set up my students. So I'm going to add a student and I'm going to name him. Jackson. So I've added Jackson in. He's my only student in this class. And the next thing it's asking me to do is now it wants me to set up my curriculum. And my curriculum, I'm going to use my CDs. So I'm going to do math, history, and Bible for this fall semester. So it's going to say next. I'm going to open up my CD drive. I'm going to install my math CD. And then it is going to run, run, run and allow me to click install because it should recognize that I put a CD into that drive. And I'm going to click install now. And my drive is working, working, working. I want to copy this to the computer itself. Click OK. And now you'll see where it's copying all the files that he'll have to use on his computer system. So instead of leaving it on the CDs, I'm actually copying it to the hard drive and then he's able to just go in and every day uh, open up his lessons for the day. So we're gonna do this three different times with the three different curriculums that he is going to be using for this year. And you'll see, it'll tell you the progress. And then once it's done, it'll tell you Math 6 has been successfully copied. Click OK, and then it will populate here. That's what is already there. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop that CD out and I'm gonna install the next curriculum. And you just keep installing curriculums until you get all of the ones you want loaded, and then you'll move on to the next step. All right, so I'm just covering up Jackson's last name. His last name is different than mine, so I'm just covering that up. But now it tells me to mark all the curriculum boxes of what he's gonna study for this year. So I'm gonna mark Bible, I'm gonna mark history and math for this term, and then I'm gonna click next. So I get a message telling me he has successfully been added, click okay. Then it will ask me if I want to have any sample lessons. He's already done this before, so we don't need any sample lessons. And we are done now. Now it takes me to my school. And here's what I'm going to do now, is when I go to my school setup, cause this is all under administration, I wanna make some necessary changes here to Jackson's, um, how he can deal with all of his lessons. So he has what's called a resource center here, and these are all the things he can use. He can have a calculator, a periodic table, a dictionary, Bible lookup, and a journal. 
Um, he does get points off for spelling if he doesn't spell correctly. Um, he can. There's a little game on here called Farmer Frank. He can use that. Now he can try a problem three times if it's a fill in the blank or short answer. If it's a true false, he only gets one time to try that answer. Now, taking me to his quizzes and test section. So what do I want him to have through quizzes and tests? Well, I'm gonna give him open book. I just let them go back and look if they need to find something because sometimes it's not, because they're on the computer, they don't have their book to necessarily go back and look or look things up. So I give them that little bit of leeway, but I also want them to have the calculator, the periodic table, the dictionary, and the journal. I give them all of those options. Then I go to their grades. Oh, I want to save my changes, yes. Then I'm gonna go to their grading scale. So they're on a 10 point grading scale. When we very first started, they were on a seven point grading scale. I did not grade them like the public schools. I changed that just last year to make it not as stringent on them. They do well. However, I just wanted to give them a, a level playing field. Then we have course, I mean, um, assignment weights. So I'm gonna change these. So lessons are gonna count 75% of their work. Now, when I was teaching school, my students did all their work in class. I didn't give homework and whether they knew it or not was based on what we did in class. So I do the same with my children. They will not have any points for projects, but they will have to do projects. Their quizzes will count 10% and their tests will count 15%. Now, I'm gonna have it show both their letter grade and their percentage. And then over here, when I wanna print out my reports, I'm actually going to put in their information here so that when I send things out to like Taekwondo, cause they get, um, they get stars on their belts if they have good school. So I'm going to fill this in and then I'll show you what's next. All right, the next thing is their homepage. When they first go to their homepage, they can have Bible, look up who was born on this day, their daily Bible verse, um, today in history, their to-do list, a word of the day, uh, where in the US or where in the world. And then I also gave Alana two drills. So, we're doing that and we're going to save. Now, we're pretty much set up with school. So I can go back out to my teacher section and then I can look at my lesson plans. So if I wanna go into lesson plans, this tells me every single day that he has school, what he has to do. So today he's got creation, he's got the flood, latitude and longitude, time zones, numbers, and then place value. So these are his assignments for today. He has a quiz on Friday. He has two, three quizzes on Wednesday. It's probably a quiz from each section. And then it just takes him on along throughout all the days to whenever they have school. And let me see if I can find that October day. So going back to the 21st, they're on a teacher's work day. So no assignments here. And the reason it seems like they have a lot of assignments is because they only have a semester to do these um, courses. So in the second semester, he'll have more courses. So this is what it looks like. And I can print this if I need. I can take the day off if I need to, to take the day off. No problem. So I'm going to go back home. And then I'm done with Jackson. So I'm gonna exit out. Do I wanna exit? Yes. And now I'm gonna go into Jackson's side so you can see what he sees when he logs in. All right, now when he logs in, he can see any reports, you know, daily work report, past due report, um, his verse is John 3, 16 for the day. Born on this day, Edward Feline or Filene was born on this day. Um, his Bible verse is John 14, 6. He can do state capitals or world capitals, which that'll be good 
because a lot of kids don't know state capitals. And then this tells him what his work is for the day. And if I click here, then this will tell him what his assignments are and when they're due. Now they are in blue, they can do they can do what's in blue and it stays in gray until the blues are finished. So he has world history and he has another world history, but he can't do the second one until the first one is completed. And then at the bottom, it'll tell you once he starts doing his assignments, you know, what his grade is. So it'll keep telling you what the grades are. So if I go back and click, if I click on Bible, these are all the units he has to do in Bible. So he has two, four, six, eight, ten. There's ten units in Bible he has to complete. Okay, so I did want to share with you the last few little things about our homeschool or some supplements we're going to be using this year and then show you my teacher notebook. So I went to Ollie's yesterday. I have had watched, I can't remember, I oh, I don't want to say her name wrong, but her channel is My Busy Bees and Me. I think it's Erica. Can't remember. But it's My Busy Bees and Me. And she was showing some workbooks that she had found at Ollie's. I didn't find those workbooks I really wanted to and I haven't gotten a Target. She also showed some that she got at Target. But I did find um, for the National Spelling Bee, this is a study guide interactive for the National Spelling Bee. This is, you know, some of those words. So I got two of those for the kids. Both of them will work on spelling bee words. Then I got, okay, here's another one. This is this is a level, this is level two. That's also level two, which is fourth grade or higher. And then what it does is it gives you a word, tells you what it means, you have to write it, and then you have to put it in a sentence or write, and then write your own sentence. Then it also tells you um, this, uh, the origin of the word. So this is what this looks like. And they had this at Ollie's, these were 79 cents. The next thing I got for Jackson and Alana, I mean, it's not just for Jackson. This is, are you smarter than a fifth grader? And they have 240 questions in there. This was uh, 99 cents. Then I got um, a fourth grade test prep book. This is from Spectrum. I really was looking for anything higher than fourth grade, but they did not have that. I just feel like they can go through these and still, you know, so this is what I got, test prep, spectrum, fourth grade. If you have all these in your area and you find these, I'd be happy to PayPal you the money for fifth grade, sixth grade, or any higher level than fourth grade because this was the only one they had. So I took it. There's a lot of where they can um, compare reading passages. There's um, strategies on how to read the passage and then test taking tips. There's main idea, details. So there's still some, there's compare and contrast, there's uh, poetry. So there's some things that they can still go over. Just, you know, anything will help. So this I got for both of them. Then for Alana, she's gonna be doing um, family consumer science. So I got her this from Abeka. It is the lab manual. This one has recipes. This is a student workbook for her to read and go through. It talks about um, measurements. So it has equivalent measurements. I will probably have to supplement or I just like her to look at some other stuff as well. We're going to be watching or start watching the, um, I can't remember, it's uh, the British Bake Off, the Great British Bake Off. That's probably not the right word, but anyway. Then it talks about substitutions, emergency substitutions. And I got this idea from Tangi over at Freedom Homestead. Her daughter is doing family consumer science as well. And so Alana likes to cook. She cooks a lot in the kitchen with mom. And so I wanted her to have just some basics that maybe, you know, when you get in the kitchen with your mom, you're not really talking vocabulary or, you know, academic vocabulary. So I wanted to increase her academic vocabulary. When I say, okay, Alana, we need to braise this meat. I want her to know what I'm talking about. Or if I ask her, okay, I don't have, 
heavy whipping cream, what's an alternative or what's a substitute? I want her to know. Or like, I don't have ricotta cheese. What can I use as a substitute? Okay, mom, you can use cream cheese. You can use cottage cheese. I want her to just know that. I don't want her to just go in the kitchen and cook. I want her to be able to know the science behind cooking. And then it also came with the teacher's guide, which is good. The one thing I could not find was the video. So if anybody out there in homeschool land has family and consumer science video, if you're, or, you know, feeling so generous, we would love it. Or I probably will go on a Becca and just look for it. So we will see what I can find. And then the very last thing that I got them were these two notebooks. These are the Exceed notebooks. And I saw Jennifer over at A Country Life share these. She was talking about the heavy duty paper that she liked. This is a one subject. I probably need to get a couple more of these. But the thing that I liked in it that she shared was it has the world map. It has punctuation and grammar. It has some math help, metrics, fractions, decimals, spelling rules, things that are common. And so I like that. Um, and then it gave you some resources, like some free resources where we could look things up. So I got one in pink and one in white, one for each kid. I do require them to write their math out in longhand. I'm not into mental math. It doesn't work for me and it doesn't work for them. So if you can write this down where mom can understand that you understand, then that's fine. I do allow them to use a calculator on occasion, but I like to see it the long way. That's how I learned it and that's how they're going to learn it. Um, the last thing I wanted to share with you all is my homeschool notebook. So this I just put together. This is mom's homeschool binder. I just put this together at the end of the year, our year when I did the kids' EOGs. So I have in here a calendar. This is an academic calendar. It is very simple. It simply says... Um, it's just the months. This is not the weeks. It has no weeks. So I put in here bizkids.com, which is the curriculum we're going to be using for finance. And then on Mondays, they're going to have financial literacy only on Mondays. That's just because I'm home. Monday is our homeschool day. So we're going to do financial literacy on Monday. Then um, I wrote down when they'll get their progress reports. They're also going to have music. Music will be on Saturdays and then probably Sundays and then one day throughout the week. So I'm gonna give them just several days. And so what I did was I went ahead and wrote in all my um, you know, work days, required days, report card days, progress report days, and I'm just keeping these in here. And then the last thing was down here, their schedule. You know, I just wrote out their schedule of, just so you could see that, who's doing what when. Um, supplements are handwriting and cursive daily devotions and then daily vocabulary because that is very important. So I went ahead and in my notebook for this year, I have a sixth grade reading list. I got this off of line. There's a sixth grade reading list of some books that I want to make sure that Jackson has a chance to read. Um, actually, Fever is on this list. And I just put, picked that one up today at the library at one of my schools. So I have that one. And then here I have the ninth grade SAT list that I went ahead and printed out for Alana. And then I also have 10th grade SAT list. I have sixth grade SAT list. And then sixth to eighth grade word wizard vocabulary list. So I'm hoping to... Um, increase their vocabulary they have extensive vocabulary no problem but i just want to make sure that they are you know staying up to date on vocabulary then this last thing i said this last thing three times i'm sorry y'all this thing i think is important i'm going to cover up just some personal information but i'll show you this so because alana's in high school what i'm doing now is i'm able to print out her transcript and so there are her classes from first semester. There are her, you know, fall 2018 and her grades. And then down here, when I put together her fall and some, um, spring, because I couldn't get it to print on the same page. 
um, I put her cumulative GPA there. So once I do her final transcript for high school, I'll just put everything on one, but she has um, one for the fall. She also has one for the spring. So that's the one for the spring. And I was able to print that out. I was not able to print it for fifth grade. For some reason, it doesn't let you print elementary. And then North Carolina requires us to take attendance we must take attendance so in their school it um i go in and mark the days they had school and so here is their attendance report for the fall or this is alana's so it tells me how many days she was in school for the fall now alana was on an iep last year which is an individual education plan and I gave her 20 additional days because she had just had issues in the lower grades with attention and you know she gets tired easily sometimes so I didn't want her to be stressed out in high school. She has requested not to have that this year and I am not giving it to her unless I see she needs it. So that's why it said 94 days. She was in school about 20 extra days past where Jackson was, which is totally fine homeschoolers we get that right the very 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 last thing i have in this notebook is their eog scores from the year prior so i'm keeping 2018 2019 in this notebook at the back with their transcript and then they didn't have a transcript for jackson but it did let me print out a grade report so it didn't give me a transcript but it did give me a grade report that printed out just like this. So I could see what his lessons were or his subjects and then his um, grades. So I did print that out for him and then I could also print it out per unit. So anyway, you guys, I wanted to share that little process with you. It was a, probably a long process, I'm sorry. I know this video is getting long, but a lot of people ask questions about homeschool. I do want to do more homeschool stuff on the channel because it's a very big part of our life. The kids, uh, it's a very big part of our lives. Let me be proper. The kids are over here doing school. So today's the first day of school. Yay! Um, the kids are doing school and it's a big part of who we are. It's a big part of our family. I just wanted to share that with any person out there trying to decide if you can homeschool or want to homeschool or how does it work. All I had to do was register my children starting at age seven. You have to register them in the state of North Carolina in your school and you have to apply for a school, which I did because Alana was going into fifth grade. So I only registered Alana for the first two years. Jackson didn't register until the next, until he turned seven. So I didn't have to put him on my school roster. I'm the teacher, I'm the principal and I managed the school. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, be sure and give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with someone you think that might appreciate it or get something from it. Thank you guys so much for stopping by our channel and we'll see you next time. Bye now.